Hello and welcome to another Zero tutorial. My name is Samuel Burmeister and I'm the owner of Tall Books. Today's tutorial is on GST and bass lodgement. This is the first part of a series that I'll be creating to break it down into edible pieces that you can absorb without being overloaded as bass is a complicated section of legislation. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do if you haven't already set up your financial settings correctly is to review your financial settings. So to do that, I go to the accounting menu and click on advanced. This will take me to the advanced settings area. Under advanced settings, I can go to financial settings. And here Zero will display my current activity statement or BAS settings. So the first thing you want to look at here is your financial year end date. Keep in mind today's tutorial is based on businesses with a turnover of up to 10 million. If you're over this amount, you may not be able to have everything applicable that I'm going through, and I may cover that in another tutorial. So GST accounting method. You want to understand the difference between cash and accruals. Cash being you report on any expenses that you've already paid and any sales that you've been paid for. Accruals is where you pay GST on any sale you've invoiced and any bill that you've been invoiced from a supplier, not necessarily having been paid yet. So for this reason, cash basis normally works out a lot better for a lot of small business. To find out the specifics, make sure you talk to your bookkeeper or accountant. Um, I am a registered BAS agent, so the information I'm giving you today will be general. But for specific advice for your independent business, make sure you talk to an accountant or BAS agent. So we're going to set this to cash basis because my business is a consulting business and obviously I only want to pay GST on invoices I've been paid for. Enter in your TFN if you have one, um, not entered here already. Your GST calculation method. Most small businesses will be reporting quarterly. There are different options available. And you can view that based on your registration details, which you would have received a letter from the ATO when you were signed up for GST. Once again, if someone did this for you, you can contact your accountant or BAS agent. If you have an annual registration, choose annually. PAYG withheld period. This is important. If you employ anyone, you need to select an option here. This is the PAYG you withhold from employees on behalf of the ATO, which is then paid quarterly with your BAS generally. So if you pay it monthly because you're a bit larger or you've elected to do so, choose monthly. Standard is normally quarterly. If you don't have any employees, make sure it's on none. Then we have, I'll leave that on quarterly. Then we've got our PAYG income tax method. Now, not everyone pays PAYG income tax installments. However, if the ATO have told you that you need to start paying installments, this is where you set it up. So there's two options normally. One is an installment that they give you. So they'll say, your business needs to pay, let's say $5,000 a quarter in income tax. So that would be the first option. The second option is income times rate. Excuse me, I need to sneeze. So option two is an income that you've received times by a rate. So you would times your revenue for the period on your profit and loss by the rate they have provided you. And then that amount will be put into the field that they give you. There are some additional tax areas here too. Only certain businesses will be paying FBT, fuel tax credits, and wine equalization tax. If you're not sure about these, check with your accountant or BAS agent. This is also handy here as you can set your tax defaults. So when you set up your sales and purchase tax defaults, this then rolls through to any invoice or bill that you enter in. So here, the defaults are set based on the last sale or purchase I entered in. If I want them all to be inclusive or exclusive, as a default, I can also choose that here. Once you've set that up, 
you can hit the save button. Make sure you do that so it updates. So because my business earns under $10 million, I am able to go to Simpler Bass. Simpler Bass was rolled out, I think now about two years ago, and the ATO brought this out to remove some of the tax codes that are really irrelevant for a lot of smaller businesses. So previously you had to report on a lot of different GST codes. Now there's only about three or four that you need to worry about under Simpler Bass. So if we click go to Simpler Bass, which I'd recommend if you are a small business earning less than 10 million turnover a year, click on that. Once again, we get our same fields. So our GST calculation, whether it's cash or accrual, how often we are going to be paying the employees tax. And if we've got an income tax installment, we want to put that in here as well. And you save and continue. So now you can see that the activity statements are ready here for you to populate, which I will go through in the next tutorial. So we've covered our financial settings. That's the main area. That's number one. Second step is to review your chart of accounts. So if you go to the accounting tab, chart of accounts, you will see the list here of all of the accounts set up for your business. If you're not across the chart of accounts, check out my other tutorial on setting up a chart of accounts in Xero. Today is just gonna be focused on the GST. So looking through all of these accounts here, we can see the names, any numbers we've applied, the type, and most importantly for today, the tax rate. So let's say I worked in the health industry, maybe my business is medically related, then therefore most of my revenue would be GST free. So I can click on sales and change the default tax setting to GST free income. If you're getting a long list here, not just these three, it means you haven't opted in for simpler bass like I did before. Make sure you go back to financial settings and click on go to simpler bass. So I'm going to leave this as GST on income because this business in the demo company does have GST on its income, like most small businesses. However, make sure this is tailored to your business needs. There are a lot of industries that do have GST free income, um, medically related, or they might wholesale or manufacture goods that are considered basic goods or um, fresh foods, vegetables, for example. Um, anything health related, you're going to have all of these as GST free. If you're selling overseas, for example, that revenue is GST free. So in this process, what I'm doing is I'm looking along the main income and expense accounts, and I want to look at there on the right GST code. So if I click on revenue firstly, I can see here I've got sales, other revenue and interest. I know that bank interest does not have GST on it. So this is a good one that I can change. Other revenue and sales have GST, so I'm happy to leave it like that. And then I move on to my expenses and I have a look here. So if there's anything here that shouldn't have GST, like bank fees, I wanna make sure it's GST free, which it is. And you just scroll through and look for anything that might have the wrong code on it. And once that's done, you have set up your chart of accounts. The benefit of this as well is that your chart of accounts, having a default code correctly selected here, will then flow on to your bank reconciliation process. When you code something to that account, it will automatically recommend this default code here. If the default code is incorrect, you're more likely to make mistakes on the BAS. So get this set up correct to help yourself in the future. If you need to bulk change tax codes, let's say all of these were on BAS excluded, I can tick multiple and click on change tax rate. It'll then allow me to move it to another tax rate here. Cool, so that's how you start your chart of accounts. If you're unsure, you can Google for advice, but also once again, check with a BAS agent or an accountant for advice on this, as this is specific GST related legislation, you don't wanna get it wrong, you're just gonna end up with mistakes that need to be rectified later on. Cool, so we've set up our chart of accounts now, we've set up our financial settings, 
we're ready for step two, which I'll show you in the next video.